in this video i will give you the final proofs with which i have waited until now because the moment wasn't there yet to reveal this to you that Switzerland is the beast with its inhabitants consciously making the alliance with the forces of evil while smiling to the entire world for 2000 years now how neutral clean and innocent they are emphasizing this in all the world's media so no one will get any other ideas in their heads and it worked until homie ross came around found you playtime is over playtime's over swiss he my mind is academic and i need proofs and facts for everything therefore i don't believe in god jesus allah mohammed and the rest of the religious hocus pocus which doesn't mean that i deny god jesus allah muhammad and the rest which the fanatic bible bangers always immediately throw at me when i don't exactly behave the way one should in certain circles to deny is when i would say there is no god jesus muhammad allah and the rest which i don't never have and never will i just don't believe that's all i do believe though the pharaohs are here like the apple sin company on a pyramid here and i can see it but i do believe in the or rather a creation out of scientific reasons it has been scientifically proven some years ago that the human dna is the most complex machine on earth and it doesn't change meaning there is no evolution the dna is permanent and final what i also believe is certain parts out of the book of revelations because the mark of the beast through electronic chips in the hand and forehead have become a tragic reality these days and for my academic mind this is a fact i can see it plus that evil is omnipresent and very much based in switzerland with the seven heads of state and ten ministries the beast with the seven heads it says one of a kind switzerland doesn't have just one head of state but seven here one two three four five six seven here they are the government known as the federal council is made up of seven members it's the only country in the world why they have seven heads or seven kings it says in the book of revelations chapter 17 verse 9 to 11 that the seven heads are seven hills on which 
the woman sits, there are also seven kings. Here you can read that the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits, there are also seven kings. So I will show you now here in this video where exactly in Switzerland this place is with all the proofs as usual. And also the last part here refers to Switzerland. Yeah. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. So you see, there are seven here, and there's one apart from the seven. This is the eighth king. And even the clock is important because here is the seven. They do nothing without a reason. And here it says 12 too, but I don't understand why 12. Must be a reason. Maybe it's another verse in, in some book or whatever. But anyway, the seven is quite clear. You know, the seven heads of state, and this is the eighth king here. Uh, why pink? Uh, well, you answer that yourself. I'm not allowed to by the censorship. So, and also this part refers to Switzerland and their criminal Nazi Templar state. And I quote, the beast who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. So the seven Swiss heads of the beast also have the eighth king who is called the Federal Council's Chief of Staff, and he belongs to the seven. In many pictures, you see them together, but he's a little bit apart. So here it says the seven members of the Federal Council, and um, so this one is uh, in. 2022 Ignacio Cassis and well here you got the other ones so that's one two three four well you know this one there was the uh, Per Set Set as the god of darkness of Egypt and Per it means the house I made a video about him so the house of the god of the underworld Per Set and um, well, we all know this symbol here, this parmelin, it's also from Per, the house. Me, it means pyramid, me, mer, or meru, it means the pyramid in Pharaonic, in, it comes from on. So it means Per, me, on, the house of the pyramid of Osiris. And uh, all pharaohs. And there he is, there's number eight. He is the Federal Chancellor, also called the Federal Council's Chief of Staff. And here's his name, Torn Herr. Herr, it's like a lord. So this is the eighth. So there are seven as in the book of Revelations, and there is an eighth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here's number eight, exactly as the book says. He belongs to it, but he doesn't really belong to it. It's exactly how it is. So I read it again for you, the last part here. The beast who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. But I'm going to show you this now. 
the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits they are also seven kings and i will show you in this video where this place is in switzerland with all the facts and all the proofs and you can see it for yourselves please excuse me that i haven't told you this before although i've known this for ages literally for ages but the time and moment wasn't right yet which it is now here it says the right time is now i've explained to you the seven heads who are the seven heads of the swiss confederacy who are also seven kings because all politicians in the world come out of the nobility in a new horizontal aristocratic rule but first something else it says that the beast rises out of the water but hey there is no sea in switzerland it is a landlocked alpine base at high altitude on top of the world switzerland has a couple of big lakes though where even big tsunamis happen when parts of the adjacent mountains break loose and create real tsunamis like the one of 2004 in the indian ocean killing more than 200,000 people so in lake geneva in the year 563 AD, there was the Taurodunum event, creating a 16 meter high wave in Lake Geneva, killing many and devastating entire towns. And this can happen any moment again. So here you can read about it, the Taurodunum event. The Taur I, I read it for you here a little bit. The Taurodunum event of 563 AD was a tsunami on Lake Geneva, then under the Frankish territory of the Kingdom of Orléans, like uh, Jean of Orléans, you remember? Triggered by a massive landslide, which caused widespread devastation and loss of life along the lakeshore. According to two contemporary chronic chroniclers, the disaster was caused by the collapse of a mountain side at a place called Taurodunum at the eastern side end of Lake Geneva. It called a great wave to sweep the length of the lake, sweeping away villages on the shoreline and striking the city of Geneva with such force that it washed over the city walls and killed many of the inhabitants. Here you can read here, the producing a tsunami up to 16 meters. Well, that's high, 16 meters. That's, what is it, like a four-story building or more? That's very high. So here you can see some pictures. You can read it all yourself here. So here's Tower of Dunum in the east and the, wet, and the tsunami went all the way to Geneva. And what do we have in Geneva, folks? Yes, what do we have in Lake Geneva today that would create danger to the entire world when a Swiss tsunami would happen again? Well, the CERN Hadron Collider 
runs through Lake Geneva and it would break in two when a big mountain rock would decide to fall into the lake which might provoke something out of another dimension to rise out of the waters just as it says in the book of revelations so here's the hadron collider it goes further on the map here here's geneva and uh, here says surin and it runs through lake geneva here's lake geneva the tsunami it started in 563 a.d more to to the right and it went higher and higher when it came here in Geneva so here are no mountains but here are mountains and here and of course where the the uh, tsunami started and the rock fell off you know to the east here north and east so um, here's the Hadron Collider and this here this here is the border with France. This all this here. Um, I think it is. And here, no, it can't be the border. But anyway, here's Geneva. The border is at Geneva, and um, so a lot of the Hadrian Collider it goes through France actually. So tsunami in Geneva, CERN. And I guess what will happen, eh? Because at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, as we all know, they are surpassing the physical boundaries of this earth that might open portals to other dimensions as speeding up matter up to the speed of light and then smash them against each other as they do in the Hadron Collider at CERN. These are physical experiments that exist nowhere else in the physical realm of the Earth's nature and are no part of the creation. Uh, this is the Wikipedia page of uh, CERN. You can read it all yourself. And here's the logo. And it says three sixes. And the colors, this is what I wanted to show you. It has the colors blue for the New World Order or the uh, the Per Het White House of Pharaoh, and it has blue for the war, representing the war crown of Pharaoh. And you can see it in big the war crown of Pharaoh, and the white for the white crown, standing for the Per Het of Upper Egypt. And of course, there are four letters for the concept of four and there are circles here the circles are part of sixes and the circles stand for the compass so it does say square and compass and the whole thing is of course in a square in a blue square so always the same ones behind it also an earthquake might break cern's hadron collider in lake geneva as we had a 4.8 season last week on September the 10th here in the east of France next to the Swiss border so I am like here next to the here next to the town of Colmar and here's Geneva you can see that here and all this here it says switzerland this is switzerland 
And here's the Hadron Collider running through the Lake Geneva. So this one here might already might have been the one that made it happen, eh? That could have made it happen. And uh, so here you can see it. France earthquake today, magnitude 4.8 earthquake at France-Switzerland border, September the 10th, 2022 on this channel here and uh, here you can see the date it was uploaded on September the 10th 2022 you can read some more about it so the danger is there it might break because of an earthquake it felt like sitting on a tractor that much my chair was shaking and in 2003 we had a 7.9 shake here in Alsace and I couldn't stand up anymore and I had to sit down on the floor so here you can read it it's on YouTube this channel here extreme weather Alsace is shaking 4.8 magnitude earthquake hits France and Switzerland 10 days ago. This Saturday, September the 10th, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake shakes the northeast of France and Switzerland. Hey, son, that can happen, eh? Here you can read some more about it here. Earthquake. The quake surprised an entire region in three countries, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake whose epicenter was located on the Franco-Swiss border. That's where I am. According to the National Seismic Monitoring Network, RINES, happened this Saturday, September the 10th, at the end of the afternoon. So here's a lot of uh, newspaper articles which I can't open because I refuse to take their cookies. So that's why I had to show it to you on YouTube. Well, and so forth. It seems to me that every time there is a dry and hot summer like 2003 and now 2000. 22 the earth starts to shake probably due to the drought in the lower layers of the earth now the time is ripe to finally reveal to you where the only place in the world is where there are the seven hills that are also kings at the same time have a big lake next to it with a woman sitting on it and that place is of course in octagon Switzerland. the name of the seven hills are the seven hoerfeerste in swiss german and you can do them in one day, you see, hiking. So that means there are hills. Because compared to each other, which you can see here, they're like hills. It's like 100 meters, like uh, altitude difference, like a hill. If you go all the way down, it's like two and, two and a half kilometers. Then it's a mountain. But there are hills, you see. And Chur, it comes in German, you say Kurfürsten. And uh, Hur or Kur in High German that means to elect, which we can still find back in uh, in Afrikaans today in South Africa. I'll show that to you later on. And Firsten in High German that's Fürsten, Fürst, ein Fürst that means an emperor, a lord, a king. So these mountains, there are kings as well like in the book of revelations yeah this is what they say about it a snow white waiting behind the seven mountains well, i just told you you know you can you can walk them in one day so they're not mountains they're hills 
you know, compared to each other. It's like 100 meters difference, you know, not even that. The seven Hoerfürsten, it says seven Hoerfürsten peaks, are as magical as a fairy tale, and the children of Tockenburg know what each of them is called. From east to west, Gaserook, 2,000 meters, Hinterhoek, 2,300 meters, Schiebenstoll, 2,200 meters, Tustoll, 2,200 meters, Brisi, 2,279 meters, Frumsel, 2,263 meters, Zelun, 2,200 meters. Trails lead to each of them. Well, you see, there's not even 100 meters difference. It's like 40 meters or 30 meters different. They're hills. They're not mountains. You know, if you walk them, there's like hills. The seven hills who are also seven kings from the book of Revelations. Here it is, people. Kurfürsten in Swiss German or Kurfürsten in High German. Or like here in Old German, Kurfürstlichen, Kurfürsten, which is written the same way as in Swiss German, and this like with the umlaut like in High German, and this is Old German, the German of that of, of that time, yeah. So Kurfürsten is a reference to the seven imperial prince electors of the Holy Roman Empire which you can see here, which was a German empire from the year 800 to 1806, and of which Switzerland was part of for hundreds of years. Although Switzerland at the same time was an independent state from its foundation in 1291 onwards. But due to the internal strife within the aristocracy between the feudal vertical and the new republican horizontal rule, the Swissies had to adapt the new situation sometimes for longer periods in which the Templars of Switzerland had already become true masters in behaving like a chameleon, changing colors from the outside only because of the incessant threats of the feudal kings and notably the king of France. This is how Switzerland has become this alleged neutral, innocent, clean state, hiding its true nature to the entire world. It's a little bit like today, you know, with the European community, like uh, Switzerland is so-called neutral and so-called not making part of the European community while they're in the middle of it and having the same laws like the Schengen rules and all this. And this was the same in the Holy Roman Empire. You know, it's the same thing going on. So here the seven prince electors, or the Kurfürsten, or in Swiss German, like the mountains, the Kurfürsten. Here it even says again, Kur, the, um, which is in pronounced Kur in German, and Kur in Swiss German. This is the old German way to write it, and here's Fürst. This is an S, you know, it's almost like the SS, eh? runic. And... Um, so these these are the this is the reference of these mountains who are at the same time the seven kings. This guy really is a king, the king of Brandenburg. And I think these are some um dukes and all this, but you know, and these are the three are ecle ecclesiastical kings, so to speak. And the nobility, they all come the um the church, they all come out of the nobility, you know. And these four here, they are worldly leaders. So these are church leaders and these are worldly leaders. So we get here three and four. 
which is a concept of three and the concept of four. So it does say square and compass. And seven altogether is the holy number of the pyramid, which I already explained to you. This one even has a, almost a Templar's cross in it. These, of course, lions, it's the nobility. Here's a, an eagle or maybe a double header. I don't know. And um, it's, it's all the nobility. And here in the middle is, of course, the, uh, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, which was a German empire, actually, with only a little bit of the north of Italy in it. And um, yeah, it says again, the Hoer Fierste like the mountains so here you got your revelation hey eh? the book of revelation here you got it it's really hard to find anything on it in english so this is in german it says the election of the king and here it says the seven kurfürsten like the mountains hey eh? and there are three ecclesiastical ones and four worldly ones you know like the king of brandenburg and here are some dukes and all this. And these are like cardinals and whatever. So, and it says here, the Pope was not included in the, um, in the election of the King of the Holy Roman Empire. And again, the numbers three and four, you know, square and compass. So here it says in English about the Prince Electors in German here. In, here it says German Kurfürst. Or Kurfürsten, and you just saw it in Old German. It's written with ch, just like in Swiss, and just like the mountains, which really is a reference to the um, the hills being at the same time seven kings, just like in the Book of Revelations. So you can read it yourself here. And here it says, you know, the electric. Electoral College is known to have existed by 1152, but it's, oh, okay, anyway. Um, a letter written by Pope Urban IV, suggests by immem immemorial custom, seven princes. So you see, even the ecclesiastical ones, they are princes. So it's really a seven kings, because the, the whole, you know, the whole church, both the Catholic Church as the Protestant Church, it all comes out of the nobility. So the, 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 uh, even here, the Archbishop of Mainz, the Archbishop of Trier, the Archbishop of Cologne, they're all princes. So the seven princes had the right to elect the king and future emperor. The Pope wrote that the seven electors were those who had just voted in the election. So they... They kept the Pope out of it. So, you know, it's already going in, in the way of the New World Order and Protestantism. Um, where, whereas, actually, um, many believe that the only Christian religion is, um, is, is the, the Catholic religion, which is um, uh, like the, the, the religion and really connected to the aristocracy. But it's, it, it is a bit strange because, I mean, the Archbishop, it, it's all Catholic, so. But, but they're all, like, you know, taken over in the other camp, like. So, the, yeah, three ecclesiastical electors, the Archbishop of Mainz, interesting symbol, the Archbishop of Trier, and the Archbishop of, of Cologne. Looks like the uh, Teutonic Knights, eh? And then four secular electors, the King of Bohemia, and the Count Palatine of the Rhine, there, the Palatines, yeah, remember? Obama is from there, and uh, Trump, his father, the Duke of Saxony, and the Margrave of Brandenburg. It also says there, the King of Brandenburg in some places. Like it has a crown on on the eagles or the the bird the the, the falcon's head. It's a falcon, and um, so three and four, the concept of three and the concept of four. So you know it's already going the direction of new world order here and the um, and Freemasonry, with the Pope being uh, uh, being avoided and was not in it. Um, 
interesting period. So maybe because um, you know the, the the religion was here already taken over, you know. So maybe also like because of that, you know, it's been talked about in like in the Bible, you know. Because here the religion is already going sideways, you know? and of course completely taken over by the uh, nobility. Oh, here it says. The Elector of Mainz was always a Roman Catholic and Cologne a Roman Catholic, except Hermann V von Wied, he was Lutheran, and the Elector of Bohemia uh, was usually a Roman Catholic. The Elector of Brandenburg was also the Duke of Prussia. Hey, Mr. Putin, the Duke of Prussia, hey? Eh? and a Roman Catholic, and then he became a Lutheran, and then became re Reformed. And, uh, well, you read it yourself. Anyway, there's seven. Seven princes. Seven kings, yes. The hills, that are also seven kings. A lot of interesting coat of arms by the nobility. And so here it says again in German, also Wikipedia, Kurfürsten, yeah. And um, here it says, ein Kurfürst war einer der ursprünglich sieben Ranghörsten, Fürsten des Heiligen Römischen Reiches. Sieben, it means seven. There's seven of them. And uh, here you can see them, there's another picture. So three ecclesiastical and uh, four secular like uh, ordo seclorum you know, like on the dollar that's the word secular is coming from that there's some other pictures oh yeah this is uh, in Mainz the seven kings and here also some in Nuremberg the church and every day at 12 o'clock it says uh the seven princes they you know they go around here they, it's turning here and it's seven o'clock so important error seven around it you know <laughs> the way he's looking eh? With the Templars cross around his neck, eh? Or the Maltese cross. You know, if you don't understand history, you're never going to understand anything what's going on today, eh? So, well, you can read it yourself. Kurfürsten. The seven Swiss hills were also seven kings. There's no other place in the entire world where you can find that, right? Eh? And there are more connections, which I'm going to show you. And here it says in German, alle sieben Kurfersten, or Kurfersten, refer referring this time to the mountains here. Sieben, it's seven, it's almost the same word, eh? And alle, it's all. If you take the the e away, it says all seven Hoerfersten, referring to the mountains, and the same word as I've shown you just before, uh, referring to the uh, the seven prince electors, or in fact seven kings. So in German, the name is Kurfürsten for the Swiss Hoerfersten, and gave name to the most famous street in Germany. The three and a half kilometers long Kurfürstendamm in Berlin, also called the Kudamm. So here it says the uh, the Kurfürstendamm, uh, also called Kudamm, is one of the most famous avenues in Berlin, well, in the whole of Germany, I tell you. 
The street takes its name from the former Kurfürsten, the Prince Electors. Now there they are again. There you are. Of Brandenburg. And Brandenburg, uh, one of the, uh, the King of Brandenburg, which is part of Berlin, why well, he was one of the, uh, the seven Prince Electors. So that's why the street is there. The broad long boulevard can be considered the Champs-Élysées of Berlin and is lined with shops, houses, hotels and restaurants. In particular, many fashion designers have their shops there as well as several car manufacturer showrooms. So it's, a, it's an expensive, very famous street in the whole of Germany where all the tourists go and all this. And you can see all the luxury boutiques, you know, Chanel, Cartier, you know, whatever. Rolex, Saint Laurent. Right? So you've got an idea. It's still the same stuff. It's all about kings and princes and the shops. Uh, well, they're still marked by this. Well, of course, the princes and the, uh, the princes of... Um, of of Prussia and all that, they they'll still visit it, of course. Kurfürstendamm, Kudam. The word first in German means an aristocrat or an aristocratic ruler or a lord or an emperor. And the word Kur means to select or choose, as still being used in the Afrikaner word coring in South Africa. I hope I pronounced that right. It's too long ago since I, uh, I've heard Afrikaans and uh, I was still a child, you know, so I think pronounce something like coring or coring. I'll show it to you in a minute. Maybe somebody can help me. So here's about the etymolo etymology in uh, in German, and here it says Kurfürst, like the Kurfürsten, and of course Fürst it means a um, yeah the German king, the Deutsche König, einer der Fürsten, die berechtigt waren, der, den deutschen König zu wählen. And here's some more about the um, etymology. Yeah, here's Kur and Kur, and here it says in NL, I think that's Dutch, Netherlands, it says Kur, like in South Africa, which is like Kur, Kurfürsten, you know. Uh, also Swedish, it says Kur and Kur. And um, even in, in uh, Ang Anglo-Saxon, there's the old word Sire, Sire or, or Kire. I don't know how to pronounce that. And here in German, Auserkoren, it means the chosen ones, like, like God's chosen people or something. They say Auserkoren. You see, there's the, there's the part Kor or Kur, like in Kurfürsten. So they are selected. So, yeah, Auserkoren, it means selected, chosen, the chosen people. You know. And here's some more the etymology in German about the word Kurfürsten. Most German people don't even know what it means. And certainly not the Swiss. And here it says in Afrikaans for the word here, Koring. Here it says Koring, it means selection, testing, like selecting the king, the core, like this part here, core. The, uh, Kurfürsten, it's the same origin, and it means the same. So Kurfürsten means the imperial prince electors, who might be even so-called minor kings. Like here in 1340, the king of Bohemia being one of the seven Kurfürsten or Kurfürsten, or the seven hills that are also seven kings, where also the clergy are being considered as kings, as all the archbishops being the Hochfürsten, or Lord Electors, 
of 1340. Here there are again three ecclesiastical ones and four secular ones. And um, here it says, the imperial prince electors left to right, the Archbishop of Cologne. The part arch, in fact, it comes from the Greek archos, and it means to rule, like Joan of Arc, um, arc-en-ciel in, in French, it means a, a rainbow, in fact, because arc is also a bow. Arc de Triomphe, you know, the, um, the, um, the, you know, the thing in, in Paris, which is the, it means the, uh, the triumph of ruling, Arc de Triomphe. So the second one here is the Archbishop of Mainz, Archbishop of Trier, Count Palatine here. The Duke of Saxony, the Margrave, Mar, it comes from Mer, and it means pyramid in, um, in demotic language and grave. So the grave of the pyramid or the grave in the pyramid of Brandenburg. And here the king of Bohemia. And this is from 1340. As I've told you many times, all popes, cardinals and archbishops come out of the nobility considered being the kings of religion by the aristocracy as i've shown you here in this video about the alsatian pope leon whose parents were the count and countess living in a castle Catholicism belongs to the old world order, feudal, vertical nobility, whereas Protestantism belongs to the Republican, horizontal, new world order, Knights Templars and their Freemasons. So here it says, Pape, it means Pope in French, Alsatian, you know, in English is just a T and an A. The, it means the, the, the great Alsatian Pope, Saint Leon the Ninth. Uh, his real name was Bruno Degisheim. De, it means he's of the nobility, like von in German. Fils du Comte, it means the son of a count, and of uh, Hugues the Fourth and uh, Heil, Heilwige de Dabo. You can't read it here, but you have to, yeah, you can read it. It's just the uh, Heil, Heil, uh, like, uh, or, you know, Heilwige, Heilwige de Dabo. De, again, you know. So, nobility, you know, J just like the, the seven prince electors. So you can see this here, my video from this year, June, the 14th of June, 2022, on my channel, Gure, the title, Catholicism belongs to Pharaoh's vertical rule, Protestantism is by the Templars' horizontal rule. The concept of three and four, just like the seven prince electors, it's, it's all by Pharaoh, people. That's why, Normally, Catholics hate Freemasons because Freemasons represent the new horizontal rule and enemy of the old vertical rule of ancient kings and their Catholic religion. But well, nowadays the Vatican and the Catholic religion have been infiltrated by the Freemasons anyway. How could it be else with a Swiss guard out of the Alpine Octagon and base of the Knights Templars and their Freemasonic political wing? These seven Swiss apocalyptic hills 
of the seven kings are very high and over 2,000 meters in altitude. But when standing on them, they are like hills with hardly 100 meters difference in height. So here you see them, all seven are here. Zulun, 2,204 meters. Frumzel, 2,263 meters. Only 60 meters difference. That's a hill. Brizi, 2,279 meters. It's only 70 meters difference with this one. Tushtol, 2,235 meters. No difference. Schiebenstoll, 2,234 meters. Hinterug, 2,306 meters. And Gazerug, 2,262 meters. Now, compared to them, to each other, they're like hills. And Gorfürste, that's the name of the king, of kings. The kings that are hills. You could say... They are seven hills on top of a mountainous ridge. And below the seven hill ridge, there is a big lake called the Wallensee, meaning the lake of the whales. Maybe a whale with seven heads. Huh? Anyway, must be a deep lake if they can fit a whale in there so this is the lake of the whales Walensee. in german they call a lake the sea einsee and the uh the sea they call das meer and here you can see the seven hill mountain ridge from another angle and uh, so these are the seven hills who were also seven kings from the uh, book of revelation everything is here the only place in the world so here you can see Walensee, the lake you see see like sea it's the other way around Walensee, the uh, lake of the whales and here is Walenstadt, the town of the whales Maybe that the ships here, the whale catchers. And here it says, Gorfersten, after the seven prince electors who were kings and who selected a new king. So here's the seven hill mountain ridge, like in the book of Revelations. And here you can see the seven hill kings once more. You see, there's seven of them, and they're like hills compared to each other. And here's the lake, the lake of the whales. It's a picture like straight out of a James, out of a James Bond movie. You know, clean, rich Switzerland with a lot of evil rulers, just like in the James Bond movie. This is where Putin has his money, where all the dictators, all the drug dealers, all the mafiosi, aristocracy, you name it, mafia, they all have their money here. Just like in the James Bond movie, with the snow and all. And so picturesque, isn't it now? And here, once more, here's the lake, Walensee, and here are the seven hill mountains, who are also kings. And the name of the kings is Gorfersten, Kurfersten, in German, of the Holy Roman Empire, which in fact still exists. And on these seven hills used to be sitting an almost mythical woman, after whom the whole area is being named, and this woman is an international reference 
to Switzerland. So here you can see the mountains, the Seven Hill Mountains. And here it says, Heidi, every little girl's favorite story. You know, nice. And she has a pet animal and lovely mountain. And look how it's clean. And she has cats and rabbits and a rainbow. What not it lovely? This is how they do it, people. They indoctrinate our children, like every little girl's favorite story, about how clean and neutral and innocent this country is. Octagon in the Alps. So when these children, they grow up, it's the same with all these, you know, fairy tales about princes and princesses in castles. And when the girlies, when they grow up, they still believe it, you know, because in their minds, they were in their blank minds, you know, where there was nothing in it yet, a little girly, you know, they got punched in their minds and hearts, you know, how, how what, what a lovely place that is in the mountains, like, and nobody will think any harm of it, you know, like, Oni Swaki Malipons, nobody will think harm of it. And the woman in those days, sitting at the Alm, the Alm is this, on top of the mountains, that's the Alm. And she was sitting at the Alm on top of the seven hill kings. She was still a child. But the child has grown up now, especially in the mythical, symbolical sense of her being. And her name is Heidi. So here you can read it. Day trip to Heidi Land and Liechtenstein. The highlights of this amazing adventure tour are Switzerland's incredible diversity and a visit to the locations featured in the world famous children's book Heidi. Well, how dare you indoctrinate our innocent children with this, with these lies? And I t I'm, I'm going to prove to you, this woman who wrote, uh, Johanna Spiri, who wrote the book, she had really evil connections. The, the whole thing is evil. You know? So here's the lake, the Lake of the Wales. Here are the seven king hills here, the, um, the Kurfürsten, Kurfürsten, or Kurfürsten. And, um, here you can read more about it here. Yeah. Well, you can read this yourself here. But here it says the alternative program during the winter months takes in the village of Vandenberg, a fabulous world of mountains, valleys, lakes, waterfalls, and gorge. Isn't it beautiful? The route back to Zurich leads along Lake Wallen, the, uh, the lake of the whales at the foot of the majestic Horfurst and mountain chain. There they are. The hills are kings. How many more proofs do you need? Wakey, wakey. So here it is. Show you a nice picture. Here, Valen Zee Lake. It says double lake because Zee is already lake. Oh, isn't it beautiful and so clean? And the whole world believes it because we all saw it when we were children. And we never forgot it because we had our blank minds. There was nothing in it yet. They engraved this in our minds. They shoved, shoved it down our throats. Oh, here, Heidi's house. Oh, look at here. It's the mountain ridge, the seven hills of the seven hill kings. This is from the book. Here, Heidi lived and. Uh, all that, all the Japs are going, all the tourists and taking pictures and Americans. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, it's like going back into my youth, visiting the Heidi house. Oh, isn't it nice? Yeah. Yeah. Look now, here are the mountains here, Heidi and Peter. Oh, what a lovely story, eh? Oh, look, she's sitting on top of the mount of the seven hills. Believe me now. Yeah, look, Heidi Land. They got the whole stuff here, Heidi Land. Here are the, the Seven Hill Mountains here. 
This is the uh, Honzo Oak Rosales, um, most probably. I'm talking German here. Yeah, Rapperswil Castle. Yeah, of course, they have to show a castle. Yeah, why not? And one of the Russian oligarchs is here, Khodorkovsky. Big criminal, big time criminal. He's pretending to be against Putin. Or maybe he never even was in prison. Who knows, you know? Just taking care of Putin's money in Switzerland. You know, everything is a lie. You know, you never know. And, uh... Yeah, show you this picture again. The uh, yeah, yeah, the violence. It must be very deep. Look, it looks very deep. Enough to put to to fit a whale or two in there, you know, or maybe seven with seven heads. And the land of the seven hill kings is officially called Heidi Land, the land of Heidi. An international acknowledged symbol for Switzerland and the Alps with its seven hill kings. With their CERN, Davos, WEF, World Economic Forum, the enslavement of humanity, the Swiss Haldeman dynasty, and their connecting a human brain to a computer with a chip in the head, right out of the book of revelations, and also connected to Heidi Land and its seven hill kings, with their United Nations and Red Cross gangsters in Geneva, and all nations traded with her Swiss banks. Swissy, playtime's over now. Here, Swissy, read this very, very well with your Heidi land. Swissy, read this. Playtime's over now. You're here. And I told you many times that Switzerland is feminine, like La Suisse in French or Die Schweiz in German. Because of the sisters of Isis, Su Is. Sir Dizis, short, Heidi Land. Okay, Heidi was a five-year-old child in the book, but she has grown up now and rules the world. And here you can see in the picture our children sleeping after having been indoctrinated with that Heidi political indoctrination of a clean, neutral and innocent Switzerland. Remembering this all their lives, until, even until they have grown up. And this story of Heidi is hiding the true face of the beast with the seven heads in this horrendous horror story. And under the Seven Hill Kings, there is an occult temple called the Pax Mal. It is Pax Mal. Where next to the temple and its apocalyptic seven hills to be seen in the background in the city of the Wales or Wallenstadt, the dreadfully innocent Heidi open air musical is being performed, visibly dancing and celebrating in the very same style as the satanic Swiss tunnel ritual of the Saint Gotthard. Heidi's creepy open air musical with the apocalyptic Seven Hill Kings behind. Another creepy Swiss ritual straight out of the Book of Revelations. And 
where many Swiss neo-Nazis come and enjoy the show in their Heideland base of the Nazi Templars. Well, let's hope the whale in the Lake of Wales, Valensee, gets hungry and eats the creepy Heidi dolls and the entire horror country with it, together with their seven hill kings. So watch this name here, Johanna Spiri. And uh, she married Bernard Spiri, an employee, when she was 25. They met when they, when they were children. They lived in Zurich, Switzerland and had only one child, a son, Bernhard Diethelm Spiri, in 1855. In Zurich, they were friends with the musician Richard Wagner. And here she is, Johanna Spiri, standing with the grail. Yeah. And I know. As I've been telling you in the um, in my first film, The Pharaoh Show, already 12 years ago on YouTube, that the Grail is the symbol of, um, of Pharaoh, which means our blood is here, our descendants are here. And this is the joining. I've shown that as well. You know, that means we're all together. You know, it consists of several parts it says one for all and, and all for one so i know this woman you know she's part of the elite and uh part of pharaoh i mean there's no doubt so johanna spiri was the author of heidi in the 19th century and she was a close friend of richard wagner the favorite Nazi composer and active jaywalker hater living in Switzerland. So Johanna Spiri, the author of Heidi, the girl on the Seven Hill Kings, was in the Wagner group, so to speak, that popped up recently again with its leader the Swiss sleeper agent, President Vladimir Putin, who has all his money in Switzerland, where his charming little family lives in Geneva. His wife, Alina Kabayeva, with their two little Putin kids. From the Swiss Heidi, circle closed, and back to Switzerland in the actual situation. I guarantee you that the Wagner Group belongs to the Octagon of Switzerland and their banks in the very style of the notorious Swiss mercenaries under Nazi Templar command. And the Swiss Nazi Templar Wagner Group will attack Russian civilians very soon, just as they al have already done attacking Ukrainian civilians and killing them and torturing them, and just as they have already done with normal Russian soldiers because the Wagner Group is not Russian at all. They are Swiss octagon of the Teutonic Knights, just as their leader, whom you can see here, who is called the Black Prince by the Swissies. Just like the French Foreign Legion, another mercenary group, that was also founded by the Swiss Octogon in 1831, with its first commander, the Swiss 
aristocratic Baron Colonel von Stoffel. So here's the list of commanders of the Foreign Legion. And all these mercenary groups, it all comes of, out of Octogon, Switzerland, and their Nazi Templars. And it's all related to Heidi, who was a personal friend, the author of the, um, the Nazi composer, Richard Wagner and the Wagner group and everything, you know. Here it says, April the 1st in 1832, um, there was the, uh, the first commander of the, um, of the Foreign Legion here, the commander of the Old Legion. It was Baron Christoph Anton von Stoffel, a Swiss Baron, yeah, here from Switzerland. It's, and this is because Switzerland was founded by the Nazi Templars. And the same of, of the, the Wagner group you know, and Putin. It all boils down to Switzerland. Hey, Swissy, ain't that so? Yeah, look, there are many Wagner groups in the world. Here's one. And here, the Wagner Group of New South Wales. It's everywhere. Wagner Group in Queensland. Why do they put the Q like this? Because this is the, the Order of the Garter. We know that now. The Wagner Society of, of Washington. Everywhere. They're all Wagner Groups. They all have these funny ideas, ideas probably. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, the Royal Wagner stuff. The Wagner Group of Southern California. All this pharaonic stuff in it here. Uh, the Triangle Wagner Group of North Carolina, of course. You know, this is the concept of three, you know, pyramid. Uh, Everywhere, there are, there are lots of Wagner groups all over the world, and don't you think they're they're not connected with the idea? Hey? Don't you think that Switzerland, the Octagon in the Alps, also called Heidi Land by the Swiss and the insiders, is an incredibly creepy place where the evil of this world is bundled, concentrated, and centralized, weighing heavy on humanity's shoulders as the weight of the seven king hills of the apocalypse. It's all there in Heidi land, the clean and innocent monster, the monster doll of seven times king of neutrality. How big do you think the chances are to find these seven hills relating to seven kings with a woman sitting on it and with a lake next to it called the Lake of Wales, out of which the monster might rise? if not the other lake next to CERN Geneva. Please forgive me that I'm not religious enough for most of you, or for not being religious at all. For I have only one religion, which is called Crush the Evil. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven 
and is going to his destruction.